Howdy fellow model railroaders, my name is Kevin Brown and I want to thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. In this episode, I've got some footage from uh, a show my group, the N Scale of Bloomington Normal, had at the Normal Public Library. Uh, we had, it was well attended and it, it was very fun, so I've got some footage from that. In addition, I had to do some work on some lighting on the layout, uh, but most importantly, I have done a, wanted to work on all the paperwork and other work to get a new train on my layout, which I'm going to call the transfer job. So uh, that's quite a lot to get done in one video, so uh, let's say we get on with it. Um, the Normal Public Library and our group have a long uh, tradition together. They treat us so well, and we get so many cool, fun kids and families through there that it's always a good time. So anyway, here's some footage from it. I hope you enjoy it. Actually, I think it's Civil War, but uh, yeah. it's supposed to be the cavalry in the Wild West. And it really is a nice module. Oh my goodness. You guys, do you guys know who Doctor Who is? See his TARDIS there? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You can see on the paper there, that's a real place there. It's a tourist attraction on Route 66, yeah. This is real. This is in Arizona. It looks just like this on Route 66. See, Dan, right there's the police car. See it? Oh, Going back into its sighting. Oh, because another train is going to take its place. That's right. This one right here. It's making noises. Good show. 
This is just fascinating. It's a diorama based on two-inch thick foam core or uh, extruded foam styrofoam. Just look how nicely that can be shaped. It's just a great idea. Can't help but wonder if there's a this could substitute as a modular. Some sort of modular approach. It's just a great idea. <laughs> Gotta see the GMO stuff. have a good time at the normal public library show it's uh, been in the first uh, weekend in November for quite a while and it, it it's always a good time and we always have good people a good number of people through this is the sort of reason that I like modular railroading as a practice uh, the ability to set our stuff up and reach out to the public at large particularly the younger generation I, I just enjoy the heck out of it so that's the sort of stuff that keeps me in uh, T-Track and all the fun that I have with that. Um, now on to other things. Um, I'm starting to run into problems with lighting on my layout. Uh, it's time to start looking at LEDs. So uh, I went ahead and started working on that. And uh, at least as important, uh, I've been wanting to upgrade my operating scheme for some time. And uh, the first step of that is to establish a new train, the transfer job. So uh, that's what's going on next so sit back and i hope you enjoy what you see here's my helpers on my railroad projects today and this is a brand new led hanging fixture to replace the uh uh the burnt out one i had that was uh fluorescence fluorescence clearly is becoming an outdated technology technology going the way of the betamax getting rid of the bulbs anymore is just a pain and those uh I was going through those like crazy. So this is going to be a step in the right direction. Um, it was surprisingly difficult to find something that would uh, hang, you know, that I could replace the hanging fixtures like the one above here. But uh, it worked pretty good. Uh, it was easy to install. And uh, on the back, yeah, I'm not going to flip it over. It is uh, 5000K color temperature, which uh, doing a little research, that's a really nice uh, balance for broad daylight. So yeah, there's. Uh, I went ahead and bought a couple, three of them because I know that the the, the rest of these are going to start burning out. So let's take a peek of it in action. Here it is installed. Uh, I had to lower it a little bit because it is noticeably brighter than the uh, previous 
fixtures, but I really like the way it lights the layout up. Um, uh, one problem with it, of course, is it did uh, highlight just how filthy this layout is. I'm shocked. I'm going to have to vacuum and clean like crazy before I do anything on uh, working on uh, operations. But all in all, I think this is the way of the future, and slowly but surely, I'm probably going to replace all my uh, fluorescence with this sort of technology. And now on to expanding my operation scheme by adding a transfer job. So I suppose I should go into what is a transfer job. In the real railroads, it, it's fairly common for different railroads to have different yards relatively close by in the same town or a neighboring town. And they have specific uh, transfer jobs, which just uh, grab the cars that need to go to the other railroad, drop them off and pick up the ones that need to come back to their railroad. Uh, they're very short things. Often you'll see they have uh, special cabooses, transfer cabooses, which are very minimalistic because it's they're not going very far. This is not a big deal. So that's what it is on the real railroads. Now, as far as on the model railroads, it's uh, a godsend to uh, operations. Basically, all you need is a, um, a stub end staging track, preferably off scene. I, I kind of like the, the hidden staging aspect. But uh, and you just uh, drive in with the cars drop them off in the yard, pick up the cars that need to go back, and head off, head back out. So that couldn't be simpler. I first saw this on a, a an operating scheme on uh, Roger Kajawa's layout years ago, and I thought, well, this is so simple, i got to do that. So I'm going to do it. So the first step is decide how I want to alter my operating scheme to accommodate this. If you've been with me for any time at all, my uh, operating scheme has been something that I just add layers to, uh, make it more complex as time goes on. Uh, if you if you start from uh, simple and become more complicated, I think that's the way it's going to get done easier. So that's been my my guide, I guess. So uh, I had to decide how I want the transfer job to work on my layout. I could use it as a source of traffic right onto uh, the various industries on my layout, and that that's a valid use. I've decided to do something else. First, I like the way my uh, uh, traffic to and from my industries works now. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So uh, I thought instead I could use this as a way to drop off and pick up cars and take cars off of the layout for a period of time and have them filter back in in a random uh, order uh, many, operations se uh, many operations sessions later. So that's the, what I chose to do with this. Uh, basically, what it's going to come down to is I've got a box here that has most of my recent purchases. They're going to roll down the minute I show them. And it's from this box. Each of these uh, cars has a, uh, a, uh, a, wait, uh, a car card uh, on the uh, other side. I'll show you that in a second. And as they come in, I will randomly uh, send some cars to the... Uh, to Blair Yard and when other cars come in come back from Blair Yard they're going to go in this box and they're going to wait to be cycled back through so uh, pretty simple um, but I think it will add a lot, quite a lot I have hopes of expanding what this is going to do I've still got two more freight trains that right now I'm just have a uh, unit trains taking their place I, I want two more freight trains to come in and drop off cars and pick them up from Blair Yard so figuring out all that it may integrate with this in the future who knows so anyway, uh, I suppose let's go take a quick peek at what I mean by the uh, staging. So we'll go to the staging yard and uh, show what had to be changed. All right, here we are back at my staging yard. If you can see way down here on the far left is my stub track. I had a little bit of room, so I thought I would put that stub track in, and that's what's going to be the starting place at least for the uh, transfer job. And it goes out through here, and just the other side of there is Blair Yard. And I went ahead and labeled them if you read it. There's supposed to be a tower there, uh, Phillip Tower. Um, that's where the, the Gulf Mobile in Ohio and the, uh, the, the north-south line uh, deviates from the east-west lines. It's all off stage and you know blue, uh, smoke and mirrors, but still, that's the location. Speaking of locations, this is the paperwork necessary for the, sta the uh, transfer job. The, uh, I went ahead, I had to come up with a name for the fictional yard everything's going to. It's I chose Pontiac Yard. Pontiac is the town that I was born in, as was my brother. Heck, as is my father. So it seemed like a pretty good uh, name for a yard. 
and as you can see I have all the car cards here for all those uh, uh, cars that are in that box and here's the waybills I'm just using a simple two position waybill for this whether it's going to transfer to Blair Yard or come back to Pontiac Yard so basically it's just going to be a very simple system easy to run um, so that and the box is, uh, that is also going to live back here that's kind of the extent of the modifications I had to do for it to run the transfer job one last note for the transfer job uh, on this side in the staging yard uh, originally I was just going to have it go back to its little stubby track over there which would mean actually coming back on the wrong main going the wrong way and I thought ah, that looks kind of silly then I realized I have a very long lead here uh, for tracks one and two of my staging so this would be a very handy place for the transfer job when once it leaves Blair Yard and heads to fictional Pontiac Yard it'd be a good place to hold it so that's where it's going to end its run and then between sessions I'll have to of course shuffle the cards and take uh, advance the waybills but more importantly put the train back over there in its stub tra track so it's ready to go next time so that's kind of all the staging aspects for the transfer job so far I've managed to show how the cars themselves are going to be used in the uh, transfer job. Now I have to add it to my dispatching system. I, I use a, a relatively complex dispatching system. It's still essentially sequential, but as you can see here, I have trains going clockwise and counterclockwise, east and west, north and south, because I like having trains that interfere with each other. I also have a place to check stuff off so that if I come down and just run a train or two, I can check off where I've been and I'll know where to start all over again. So that's what things were like before. Now with the new transfer job, we come over here and the new transfer job, its job is in blue. Now notice that it is uh, one of those trains like the local that goes both clockwise and counterclockwise. So it means that it has to uh, have its place uh, uh, it's position marked for both uh, lines, and I think I've done that pretty easily. So, now I have a grand total of 10 trains to run a complete sequence on the Brownsville Ter Terminal Railroad. So, and I couldn't be happier. So, that's kind of phase one of my uh, upgrading my operations. Uh, I think the transfer job will add quite a lot to the uh, the flow of cars through into and out of the yard. and. I have plenty of other stuff I want to work on, and that's kind of going to be my emphasis for a while. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on there. Now, uh, this is where I usually talk about my group, the N Scale of Bloomington Normal. We don't have a show, to my knowledge, until April. So it's kind of a dead time. However, there's some interesting things afoot. I, I guess I just don't want to jinx it by bringing up stuff that isn't uh, set in stone yet. But there's some interesting things going on with, the, with, our, with our group, so hopefully I can show you some of that. If it, uh, if it comes to pass. Well, I guess that's kind of all I have for this video. I hope you like what you saw. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you next time.